I do think men have it harder in dating because we as a society, we failed you. Hey guys, Miss Single Fight here answering guys dating questions from a woman's perspective. I want to talk about something really serious today. So this video may be a little bit longer and more rambly than normal, but I think it's really important to talk about this topic. And the reason I'm, I want to bring this up is, well, due to many reasons, but um, recently I learned of some really sad news about a guy friend of mine whom I actually lost touch with the last couple years. And I want to thank you, um, our mutual friend, you know who you are, for reaching out to me despite having to deliver some very tragic news. I learned that my friend had passed away due to a battle with drugs. And um, I think it goes deeper than that. He's someone who was battling some mental demons. And while we were close friends, I failed to see all the signs. And this leads me to a pretty serious topic that I want to discuss, which is I do think men have it harder in dating and in hard times because we as a society, we failed you. The root of the issue is mental health. And I want to invite more people to talk about their mental health and their experiences with their mental health issues. And if you're thinking this doesn't apply to me, I don't have any mental health issues, I still ask for you to hear me out because a lot of times mental health issues aren't something that we can self-diagnose. And also it's something that's sort of stigmatized. You know, people don't feel like they can openly talk about these issues. But I think now's the time to openly talk about a problem that affects a lot of people. For decades now, as a society, we've been so focused on women's equality, which is absolutely needed. But we've sort of forgotten about bettering you guys, you know, the male species. If anything, we've started to blame and exclude you in the conversation. I don't want you to feel bad for being your gender. You had no choice. But I think it's time we start having honest discussions about how we can work together to improve your well-being. I truly believe that guys have it harder than women when it comes to dealing with adversity because of one thing, lack in communication. See, when we women go through a challenging time, we learn to talk it out. We talk to our friends, we talk to our family, we talk to ourselves a lot. And as a result, we're able to release some of these problems so we can focus on bettering ourselves. But guys, don't get that sort of encouragement. You haven't been given any tools to help you get through tough times. I'll give you an example. If a girl goes through, let's say, a tough breakup, it's perfectly acceptable for us to talk about it to our friends and even to strangers. We'll talk about it until we absolutely exhaust the topic so we can move on. But if guys go through a hard breakup, you're usually encouraged through distractions like, Go pick up someone else at a bar and get a rebound. Go hit the gym, go drink. There's no sort of reflection period. Now, why is that? Because you guys have a hard time being vulnerable because it's not something society has taught you to be. So then what happens? You bottle up these frustrations and feelings. You feel stuck, you get angry, you start victimizing yourself and you feel alone. You feel like it's you against the world. And guys, let me tell you something. This is a really dangerous place to be. Now, I read this great article recently by Charlie Hohen. I think that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. And I've linked it in the description where he talks about the Vegas shooter and the root of the problem is the mental health of men. And one of the problems he highlights is that men are intrinsically lonely. There's a feeling of isolation despite how many friends you may have and how big your family is. And when you feel like you're the only one who can deal with your problems, you tend to get too stuck in your own head. You've been there, right? You just dwell and dwell on something and see no light at the end of the tunnel. And sometimes you get to a point where you either brush it away and avoid it, or the frustration explodes and you're ready to snap. 
You guys, I get hundreds of emails from you all on a weekly basis with almost the exact same scenarios. You come to me asking for dating advice, but you're really asking for someone to listen to you, someone to support, someone to be vulnerable with in a safe space. And I promise I will continue to offer that for you, but there's no way I can respond to everyone's emails. So here are some ways that you can work on honing in the tools to help you dig yourself out of problems and get out of your head. Number one, know who is in your real support network. Sure, you may have lots of friends that you go out with, play basketball with, have fun with, but the true test of friendship is during hard times. Can you pinpoint someone from your friend group who would be there for you through these tough times without judgment? And don't freak out if you can't. Now's the time to start. So you wanna identify the friends who may have potential. And now it's your time to work on that friendship. I can guarantee you that the minute you open the door of vulnerability with a true friend, they will be receptive. But you have to take that first step. And the way you wanna frame it is like this. Hey, I'm going through a rough patch and could really use someone to listen. I value your friendship and I was hoping I could talk to you. Practice saying this a few times because I know how hard it is to ask for help. Get comfortable with it. And just like dating, know that if the other person is not receptive, then they're not the right fit for your life. No need for resentment. Just know that they're more of a peripheral friend as opposed to a really good friend. Trust me, it's so important to cultivate deep, meaningful friendships and relationships throughout your life. But this also takes work on your part. Number two, write it all down. I'm no psychiatrist, but I know that it's very beneficial to find some way to express yourself and your frustrations. And one way is through talking, and the other is through journaling. Think of it as a way to memorialize how you feel in the moment, because you'll never get that moment back. When you feel compelled, jot down everything you're going through what you're feeling. Some of you email me novels and I enjoy it because at least you're getting it all out there. But now here's the key. After you've written it down, revisit in a week or two. Give yourself some time in between. And then when you do revisit, approach your writing like you're a stranger or you're reading someone else's journal. Read it again without any judgment, but with a fresh perspective. From personal experience, this is such a powerful tool and it provides a really strong foundation for personal development. And finally, number three, know the difference between being vulnerable and being victimized. Being vulnerable is a necessary step to getting to know yourself better and to connect better with your friends and family. Now, this is not the same as being weak. Being vulnerable is defined as being in need of special care or support. It's about opening yourself up to someone else and asking for their help. It's about owning up to your weaknesses and being open to ways to improve yourself. This is very different than feeling victimized. A lot of you reach out to me with a why me sort of tone. Why does this happen to me? Or why do I deserve this? Stop playing the victim. It's counterproductive. Sometimes shitty things happen to good people. That's just called life. So when it does happen, you need to reframe your mindset to not point fingers, but to see it as an opportunity to better yourself. Here's a common scenario. Your crush tells you that she's not interested, but she still gives you signs that she's stringing you along. You then find out that she has a new boyfriend and that's heartbreaking. And I probably get this email at least 10 times a week. Now, instead of thinking, why me? Why is the boyfriend better than me? Why does she string me along? You need to shift your perspective and think, I'm going to be vulnerable and tell a close friend of mine about these frustrations. And once you've finished venting, get excited because this is a great opportunity to learn about yourself. Make some declarations. You knew she was stringing you along, yet you still kept contact. Declare that the next time this happens, you will just peace out, not put yourself in that situation. You would then avoid all that heartbreak of her eventually dating someone else. Also, declare to yourself that you'll only surround yourself with people who absolutely want to be around you. If she rejected you and still kept you around, she's not someone who's a hell yes about you. She's sort of like, eh, a maybe about him. Why surround yourself with someone like that? Declare to yourself that you'll only surround yourself with people who are hell yes about you. Now, how exciting is that? 
You've not only diagnosed your situation so you can avoid it next time, you've also found a friend who can hold you accountable for all your declarations. So again, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist. I can't diagnose you, I can't legally do it and I won't. But I want you guys to feel less lonely in what you're going through because chances are, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, a lot of other people are going through the exact same thing. Put your mental health as number one. It's equally as important as your physical health. If you work out your body on a regular basis, you should also work out your mind on a regular basis. It's equally as important. This journey to better mental health is extremely challenging because it's not something that's taught in schools, but it's also extremely rewarding. And with that, you've been single-fied. If you ever feel like you're extremely stuck in something, you've tried pretty much everything you can to dig yourself out of this hole and you just can't, I highly recommend that you see a professional. There's absolutely nothing wrong with seeking professional help. They're professionals for a reason and they can really help you.